Hello everyone, Kanasa here and welcome back to Coming Home Redux. In this episode, we are finally going to be putting together the interplanetary design or creating the interplanetary design even, the next generation of crewed interplanetary vessels, which I did say in the last episode is going to be an EVE class vessel going along the old naming system that I used in the old Coming Home where we're going to name our big chunky massive spacecraft after some of the planets in the stock system. So in order to do that, what I am going to have to do is actually upgrade the totally reliable assembly platform ever so slightly, because that needs 160,000 material kits in order to produce the vessel that we do want to produce. It currently cannot store that many at once, so we are in the VAB working on a new module that we will have to attach to the station. With this module, we should have 200,000 material kits on the station if it is completely full, which will be more than enough to build the new vessel. It is going to require a little bit of reassembly of trap, but that shouldn't be too difficult. Here I was trying to figure out if I could create a new launch vehicle for this as well, but I decided in the end actually Nah, let's just go with Proxima. Proxima, the very heavy launch vehicle that I created quite a few episodes ago now. So it's been a while since we've seen a launch of one of these, but I thought, yeah, let, let's get a let's get another launch out. Let's actually show one of these launches because I have been launching these. I've just not been showcasing them because in this series, in order to make it, you know, show show all of the interesting stuff. I am kind of skipping out just resupply runs. The only thing that I want to show is new interesting stuff and crewed missions because just showing the same resupply run over and over again, in my honest opinion, will get boring very quickly. So we got this out to the launch pad and unfortunately I forgot to auto strut everything. So that's why the payload exploded to begin with, which was a bit of a shame, but it's fine. We could just launch another one. This is a science mode rather than a career mode. So funds aren't exactly important, although it is a little bit annoying every time something like that does happen, because obviously that is not good. But we're able to get to orbit with this rather large supply of material kits and specialized parts. I, I think there's specialized parts on here as well. I, I might be incorrect. It might just be material kits. Because I know Trap already has a lot of specialized parts on board. Yeah, no, we're fine to get to orbit. And as we can see, we have now rendezvoused with the old station with a whopping 19 meters per second left in that orbital maneuvering stage. Yes, the Delta V margins of this mission were incredibly tight, but we were able to successfully get there by the, the skin of our teeth. It, it was close. And I knew when I was designing it, it would be close. I wasn't actually sure if it was going to make it, if I'm going to be honest. But, you know, I thought, let's just give it a go and see if it works. But we were able to dock the new part. And like I said, with a little bit of rearranging of the station, everything is put back into its place, ready to build the EVE class interplanetary vessel. Now, I probably should put a seizure warning on this video, because what's about to happen is quite seizure inducing. Yes, we are going very fast and we can see road spinning behind us incredibly quickly. That is a little bit harsh on the eyes and I do profusely apologize for leaving this in the video. I probably should have cut this out, but there it is. And with that, we have now built this ginormous, absolutely friggin' huge interplanetary vessel. And I did mention in the last episode, we do need a name for this. We are going to build a fleet of these. I, I'm thinking probably we'll have maybe three of these by the end. And then obviously we will also be working on some newer vessels as well. So it is the EVE class, but the actual ship needs a name. It's, it's like you don't just call a real life ship just the class that it is. All the ships have a name like... I, I don't know really any particular names of ships because I'm not that keen on, you know, actual naval ships, but like the HMS Anne or the HMS Queen Elizabeth or something like that. You, you get a name for the ship, even though the class of the ship would be called something different. So this does need a name. 
So if you've got some sort of cool name for this new interplanetary vessel, why not leave it in a comment below? I'll have a look through them, I might even create a poll, or I might just choose one that I think sounds amazing, and we'll see how that goes. Anyway, what we did there was we just moved it to a slightly higher orbit using a couple of Poodle engines that I attached on the back. That way, when I go to refuel it, it won't be hanging around trap, and it means that my frames will be slightly better when I get to it. It's, it's more for my sake of mind than anything else. But talking of refueling, well, it currently does not contain any fission pellets in the slightest. We are going to have to somehow transport those across from Collins Station that is in orbit around Armstrong to Road. So that is what I am designing right now, a new fission pellet transporter that will do exactly that. This took me quite a while to figure out how I was going to do this because obviously I need the Delta V to get from Armstrong to Rhodes with the fission pellets and then I also need to figure out the Delta V that I need to get back to Armstrong from Rhodes. And this is quite a heavy vehicle. So squeezing that out without it being too big was quite difficult and it made me realize, well, we are going to need a fuel store over at the new station, over at Collins Station. That's what we're going to be working on now. There is going to be quite a bit of vehicle assembly bits in this video. This isn't even going to be the last one that I designed. But yes, this is basically the fuel depot from Trap just made a little bit bigger. And so the final thing that we're going to be working on is, of course, a way to actually fuel up that new fuel depot that is going to be at Collins Station. So this is going to be a craft that will take fuel from Nuke Base 1. It will then fly up or go into space around Armstrong, rendezvous with Collins Station, and then it will transfer all its fuel across, and then we will leave a little bit of fuel in it so that we can actually go back down to the surface of Armstrong and refuel it again at Nuke Base 1, which obviously does have a ore miner and a liquid fuel and oxidizer production felicity, felicity, facility on board, which we set up in the previous episode. So the first thing that we're going to be sending over to Collins Station is this new fuel section. And once again, I seem to be very forgetful about auto strutting things, so that caused it to be a little bit wobbly. And also, again, extraplanetary launch pads put all of the fuel in the wrong tanks. Fuel is supposed to go in the balls. We all know fuel is stored in the balls. But no, it moved it into the two ginormous tanks on the side, which meant that the center of mass was really offset and that this kind of went all janky. We weren't firing through the center of mass and it caused problems. Not as big as this problem though. So the big ball on the end got a little bit hot. It got a little bit hot and bothered with that Emancipator engine firing up and so it exploded. So that was a bit of a failure. We're gonna try again. This time I've placed a couple of radiators on, two of which, or, or, or there were six radiators, two of which instantly exploded due to the gimbal engines on that Emancipator. Rather unfortunate, but alas, once again, this was not enough in order to prevent that big ball from overheating and exploding exactly like that. So we go back to the drawing board. And we designed something new, this time with four massive black radiators on the side that will absolutely be able to radiate all heat prevent or all, all heat generated by that emancipator engine. I've also created a little bit of a structure in between the engine and the fuel tank. And with this new design, we are more than capable of actually completing that burn without everything going completely wrong, which is obviously very, very nice when that does happen. And I do want to say, someone said about the Emancipator engine that the reason why that I couldn't transfer enriched uranium to it is because it's quite a, it's quite a powerful engine, the specific impulse is insane, and the thrust is insane as well. I know that. The problem that I was having is when I was designing this in the vehicle assembly building, I should have had enriched uranium in that Emancipator in the last episode. The problem that I was having is because I had somewhere else to store enriched uranium on the craft that I was producing with in extra planetary launch pads even. Well, the way that works, it was not putting the enriched uranium that should have been in the engine. It was putting it in somewhere else that was supposed to be empty. And because of that, that's why I had to go into the save file and actually edit that so that it was different. 
It should have been there. It was not. And it's rather unfortunate. Like, these ones work fine because there is nowhere else for enriched uranium to be stored on these craft. It was just that one design that had the Vulcan nuclear smelter and also the enriched uranium storage on it. Anyway, what we're sending over now is basically the production module from the Totally Reliable Assembly Platform. It is exactly the same as the one on there. This is going to be sent over to Colin Station and this will be able to produce us spacecraft in space around Armstrong, which is going to be great for building future surface bases. So one thing that I didn't mention is rather than sending these tugs back last time when we brought that fuel depot over, I actually got a Kerbal out. I did show it on the video and we dismantled it. And we're going to do the exact same thing for this one, but I'm not going to show it because I don't really want to show that twice in the course of one video. We've seen it once. We don't need to see it again. I showed you that we were about to dock it and then just, yes, let your imagination run wild. We got a Kerbal out and we destroyed it exactly the same way that we did the last piece that we sent over. But with that, we are capable of being able to dock this new production facility. There is a workshop tucked away underneath all those material kits. I did mention when I built Trap that actually I really don't like the look of the extraplanetary launch pads workshop, so I try and hide them as much as possible. So those material kit supply holders are hiding that rather ugly looking blue workshop and then obviously we have the workshop the the actual pad at the end and with that we are able to make our fuel transfer vehicle the vehicle that will take fuel from the surface of armstrong to the space station and this was rather easy to make and this is also the first vessel that we have created not in low road orbit which i think is quite a nice milestone obviously we're still in the road system but it's nice that we're, we're building things elsewhere now. We, we have options, we have places that we can go. And with the systems now that we've got in place, all we really need to do is build a base that is capable of building material kits and specialized parts. And then we don't even need to rely on road or anything anymore around Armstrong. But unfortunately, in order to do that, we are going to need an awful lot more tech because that is very 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 late game stuff so we did fuel this up i did leave the planetary logistics screen up there because it looked a bit weird that i was just getting it, it seemed like i was getting liquid fuel and oxidizer out of nowhere when i was transferring it across but no the usi planetary logistics i did have lfo and oxidizer stored that we had been storing at a previous date and then what we did is of course launch this back up to orbit and we are able to dock again to Collins station to the actual dedicated docking port for fuel transfers and we will just move the fuel across this will be used to transport fish and pellets in the next episode. But until then, I have been Karnasa and I will see you later.